Welcome. We are looking at solving equations with rational expressions. In other words, fractions. And the fractions that we will be working with include variables and polynomials on top and or on bottom. So the first step in this process is to get rid of the fractions. Now, the easiest way to get rid of fractions is to find the common denominator and multiply everything, and I mean everything, on both sides by the common denominator over 1. Now, in this case, there's a 5, a y, and this could be understood to be over 1. So there's a 5, a y, and a 1. And the common denominator of those single terms, no addition or subtraction there, is multiplying them together because they have nothing else in common. So 5y. So I'm going to multiply everything on both sides by 5y over 1. Now, if it is helpful for you, let me shift everything over a little bit. Um, if it is helpful for you, you can do some of that work over on the side so that you can see when things cancel out. For example, when I distribute here, that is 5y over 1 times 2 over 5. And you might want to do that kind of thing occasionally. So the 5s are going to cancel out, so that leaves me with 2y. Now I need to multiply here. Now the same kind of situation. 5y over 1 times 2 over y. This time the y's cancel out, leaving me with 10. And of course when I distribute 5y times 1, it's just 5y. Alright. Uh, now I can do that where it sits. When I distribute, the 5's cancel out. So what's left is y and 2. But what students often make a mistake with is then when they distribute to the next one, they don't distribute the whole 5y. They make a cross off and then they think the 5 is not, uh, the 5 is not there for when you distribute here. Wrong. Each time it's a new 5y that gets distributed, no matter what you reduced in that one multiplication. So be careful of thinking that that disappears. There we go. All right. So let's continue with this solving. The next step is to actually plug, uh, solve this equation, I should say. So I'm going to subtract 2y from both sides to get all the variables on the same side. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 3. Now, you can leave it as 10 thirds. For me, I'm happy with that. Some teachers may want you to write it as a mixed number, one, uh, 3 and 1 third. Uh, but that's fine for me. Now, you should always check for extraneous solutions. <clears throat> and extraneous solutions basically are solutions that would cause a problem in the original equation. <clears throat> now, if, for example, if somehow the end answer here was y was 0, that would be a problem because I'm not allowed to have 0 as a divisor in the denominator. So I would have to say that was no good. Other times there's situations, depending upon the problem, where you might get more than one answer, and if you plug a certain answer in, it doesn't end up making the two sides equal. But most of the time it's a cause of the denominator becoming zero. Okay, so those are the things you want to watch out for when you're working with these. Here, let's go to the next example. All right, so the first thing I need to do is I need to figure out what the common denominator is. Well, there's only a single term in each denominator. That makes it a little easier. And then I'm going to multiply everything on both sides by whatever this is. Now, if a variable is there, 
you know you need to use the biggest exponent for that variable, n squared. And in addition to that, the coefficient, what's the smallest number that 3, 4, and nine, uh, 6, rather, all go into? And that would be 12. So 12n squared is what I'm going to multiply by. <clears throat> now, of course, my audience today is really my honors algebra 2 students. So I'm not going to do all that work on the side. But if you ever do need me to do that work on the side, just ask for it. I'd be happy to show it to you. So when I distribute here, <clears throat> the n squareds completely cancel out. The 12 and the 3 reduce 1 and 4. 4 times 2, 8. When I distribute here, again, n squared completely cancels out. 4 and 12 reduce to 3 and 1. 1 times 3 is 3. And finally, when I distribute here, one of the ends will cancel out. The other will still be there up top. No n on bottom. 6 and 12 reduce to 1 and 2. So that's a 2n times 5, or 10n. <clears throat> I think you'll find a lot of the answers in these problems come out to things that are not easy answers. They're not 2 and 7 and negative 1. And that's because it's difficult to come up with a problem to have it that way. So the next step here is to subtract 3 from both sides. 5 equals 10 n and then divide both sides by 10, n is 1 half. Now again, it's not 0, so that's not going to cause us a problem for our original problem. And so we continue. Here's our next example. See if you can come up with the, G, uh, the LCD, least common denominator, I might have called it a GCF by mistake. The LCD of this problem on your own. Least common denominator. All right. So the common denominator, or least common denominator here, first thing I really need to do to find that is I need to figure out what this is when I factor it. This happens to be x plus 4 x minus 4. And these two give you a big hint that that's the case. Now I'm going to cross this off so I'm not looking at that. I'm looking at this for my denominator. All right, so the common denominator is this because it includes the x plus 4. It also includes the x minus 4. So I am going to multiply everything on both sides by x plus 4, now I'm running out of room, x minus 4 over 1. I'll try to write that out over this side. x plus 4, x minus 4 over 1. All right, when I work on this side, the x minus 4s cancel out. Now I'm going to just write this out. I'll multiply after. So what I'm left with is a 3 times x plus 4. Thus, when I distribute here, the x plus 4 is cancel, and I have a 2 and an x minus 4. And on this side, both the x plus 4 and the x minus 4 cancel out, so I'm left with 14. Now, so far, we've had no real difficulty because all of our variables are only to the first power. Our next example, however, I believe that will change. So, I'm going to distribute 3x plus 12 plus 2x minus 8 equals 14. I'll combine like terms. 5x plus 4 equals 14. Ooh, this looks like it's going to come out nice. I'm going to subtract 4. Let's extend it. 5x equals 10. It sure does. Divide by 5. x is 2. Now again, 
You want to make sure no extraneous solutions. So I'm going to take that to 2 minus 4, no problem. 2 plus 4, no problem. And same here. X, uh, 2 squared minus 16, no problem. Um, I could actually take the time to do that out. Let's do that. 3 over 2 minus 4, negative 2. 2 over 2 plus 4, 6. 14 over 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 16 is negative uh, 12. And let's see if they actually equal each other. I would have to get these all with negative 12 in the denominator, or positive 12 in the denominator would be fine, right? So multiply top and bottom by 6, 18 over negative 12. Uh, multiply top and bottom by 2, 4 over 12, 14, negative 12. All right, now it doesn't matter whether the negative is on top or bottom as long as there's only one negative sign. Negative 18 and positive 4 makes negative 14. It does work. All right. Again, this one is a check for extraneous solutions. We'll move that lower because it's probably going to get in our way. Uh, I'm going to start us off by factoring this into two parentheses. Oops, it's a y. It would help if I use the right variable. y minus y minus. All right, so it's probably 2 and 6. Let's see. Yes, 2 times 6 is 12, and 2 plus 6 is 8, and they're negative, so it makes negative 8. It does give that to me. So let us go ahead and multiply everything on both sides by y minus 2, y minus 6 over 1. Common denominator over 1. y minus 2, I'm running out of room here, oops. y minus 2 y minus 6 over 1. That's multiplied together, obviously. Here, the y minus 6 and the y minus 2 both cancel. I'm left with just 4. On this side, uh, oh, one thing that I haven't had happen yet, but could happen on the homework, watch for this to be a negative. If that's the case, make sure that you're prepared. When I multiply here, the y minus 2's cancel, and I end up with y times y minus 6. Here, and, and if this were a negative, you'd put it here. In this case, it's a positive. When I multiply here, the y minus 6 is canceled, so I have 1 times, or just, y minus 2. Uh, but if that's the case, you, if this were a negative, you'd put a parenthesis around it. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, boy, those are mismatched a bit for size, but that's okay. We can do this. Um, I'm going to distribute y squared minus 6y plus y minus 2. Let's extend this. Not what I wanted to do there. I wanted to pull this down. All right. Next step in the process here is I want to get everything, now I've got a squared term. So I, when I have a squared variable and I can't get rid of it, I want to get everything on one side equal to zero. So I subtract four from both sides and I combine like terms, y squared. I've got negative six y and one y makes negative five y and negative six. So now I need to factor and solve if I can. If I can't, then I'm going to have to use either complete the square or quadratic formula. y plus and y minus because of my signs. I need a pair of numbers that multiply to negative 6 and differ by negative 5 or add to negative 5. I need a negative 6 and a positive 1. Those would differ by 5, coming out to a negative 5, and multiply to negative 6. 
Now I want to set equal to zero and solve. Y plus one equals zero. Y minus six equals zero. And then I'm going to solve them. So I'm going to subtract one. Y is negative one. Now obviously this is in my way, so let's move it down. Add six. Y equals six. All right. Negative one, positive six. Let's go back and do this check for extraneous solutions. If I put one in the denominator, no problem, no zeros. If I put six in the denominator, if I put six here, that's gonna be a problem. If I put six here for y, that's gonna be a problem. So six, is an extraneous solution. It is an extra answer coming about because of the method that we used to solve for the problem. So this is what we, we would call an extraneous solution. So we just cross it off and circle the one that is the only solution or solutions left. And that is your lesson for today. Have a great day.